Hey friends, welcome to Whiskey Whistle. I'm the host of the show, Mark, and you're watching Whiskey Review number 185. This is a head-to-head, -head, uh, the first on the show here, Glen Moray, Glen Moray Distillery, comparing their uh, one of their latest NAS whiskeys. This is the Chardonnay finish, and comparing that to their uh, former bottling, which is also uh, Chardonnay, but Chardonnay matured for 10 years. So we're going to compare those two and see how they uh, how they do. Um, now these are the new look of uh, the Glenmorey whiskey uh, bottles for the Glenmorey single malt uh, space side uh, Scotch. As I fumble over my words, let's get that poured. This is the Chardonnay cask finish, as I mentioned. They've got a port cask finish. They have a sherry cask finish. They have a peated, which is uh, uh, actually fully peated, not just a peated cask finish or anything like that. So that's great. And they've also got the classic, and that's their opening price point uh, for the range. They're all very reasonably priced and uh, uh, very, very drinkable. So let's see how that does. Now, uh, as my subscribers know, I'm from Winnipeg, although I live here in Seoul, South Korea. Um, so these ones I picked up at, uh, I guess that's the, the best place to get Glenmore, in fact, in Seoul, is the malt shop. It's in Gangnam. Yep, Gangnam style Gangnam. That's a place. It's real. Um, so you can find it there. And if you need directions to get there, I've got a video to take you there too. So if you're in town, uh, there's an easy way to get there. Just follow my directions. I'll put a link to that uh, in this video. Um, well, we'll let that sit for a minute, and we'll pour a little bit of the 10-year-old, which I am trying to keep as long as I can. I may actually go and get another of these if they still have them. Put that down for a minute. Uh, this one I've had for quite a while, in fact. Uh, probably uh, a year, if not a little bit more than a year. And... Um, that's enough. Well, I was waiting for the right time to do Glenmore, and I think now is the time. They've won many awards for their whiskey. Let's find out why. Okay, now, uh, just so we don't get confused, the Kilt Lifters Scotch Club, that one has the uh, the new one, the Glenmore Elgin Classic Chardonnay Cask Finish, and then the Clear Glass with nothing on it, has the Glenmore uh, Chardonnay matured, 10-year-old Chardonnay matured. Okay. All right. First of all, the nose on the uh, new one. It's 40% ABV, and the color is pretty much a straight-up gold, isn't it? Oh, I didn't bring my little paper. Well, we'll use this one. It's got lines on it, but that's okay. Okay, there you can see the color. And uh, is there any difference in color between these two? Uh, not appreciably. They're pretty much identical in color. Uh, can we say anything about that? Well, uh, I'm not going to mention it. Uh, you can probably guess uh, why the color would be identical on two different whiskeys. Okay, on to the nose. Wonderful nose. It's got classic uh, hay and caramel. Nice ripe apples, ripe fruits. A hint of white wine there, not very much. I write here, it's bright, it's fresh, white wine gums. Sorry, white wine, wine gums, I should say. White wine, wine gums. A subtle hint of peat back in there somewhere. Uh, apple, almost a Calvados kind of a scent here. Ginger and thyme are some spices that I smell. And uh, I don't know why, I, this is just what I wrote. Thawed frozen grapes. So frozen grapes that have been thawed. Okay, on to the palate. Cheers all. Hmm. Hmm. 
for being young, and I think I may have heard, I don't know, is it six years? Is it eight years? Um, very, very smooth, velvety whiskey. Of course, it's 40% ABV, um, but I'm sure that it would still be just as silky smooth at 43 um, if they upped it, which would be nice. And uh, I forgot to mention the time in Chardonnay wine barrels. Uh, eight months in Chardonnay wine barrels. So those are likely uh, very fresh wine barrels. Mm -hmm. Sweet and fresh. The longer you hold it in your mouth, the drier it gets. I still get grapes. I get some white peach. Uh, for the Koreans watching, some tame. So tame is Korean melon. It's a yellow, small yellow melon. Not quite like a honeydew. Uh, the skin looks more like uh, watermelon skin with stripes, but it's yellow and white. And the inside looks like a honeydew, uh, completely white flesh. I guess no, not quite like a honey honeydew. Honeydew. Uh, anyway, completely white flesh and um, seeds like a cantaloupe. All right, some fizzy candy also. Hmm. Vanilla soda. Like an Italian, uh, vanilla Italian soda. And the finish is where you really notice the uh, the wine effect. Dry, sweet, white wine is what I'm tasting here now. I still got the vanilla soda, some ginger beer, and a little bit of melon also. Very nice. We'll add a bit of water and we'll let it sit for a little while. Not too much water, but half of what I would normally put in. So that's definitely less than two milliliters of water added to about 20. Let that sit for a minute. Okay, let's have a look at the 10-year-old Chardonnay cask matured. And um, I've lost the can. Where did I put the can? Here it is. Uh, okay, Chardonnay cask matured special reserve. A tremendously rich moray, fully matured in Chardonnay wine barrels. The only one in Scotland that does that. Which have given the whiskey an incredible depth of flavor and the perfect, ba perfect balance of caramelized fruit butterscotch, and lingering notes of toasted oak. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ah, no. Still not leg it's not legible. The Glen Morey, master distiller, very interesting man, very active on social media, especially Twitter. Uh-huh. Graham, yes. Graham, uh, C-O-U-L-L. -L. Graham uh, Cowell, maybe? I'm not sure of the pronunciation there. Graham Cowell. Sorry about that, uh, that Graham. Uh, anyway, he is a, a, just a big champion of social media. Um, very active, very friendly, very approachable. And not only that, but also uh, his wife is also really supportive and active uh, in the uh, social media community. So uh, make sure you add him on Twitter. Add me on Twitter also, Whiskey Whistle. All right. It's very different. I guess I should have compared them both neat, but... On the one hand, I smell more wine here. On the other hand, I smell uh, just something that's just very different from other whiskeys. So I have never encountered this scent um, anywhere else but here. Well, there might have been a Danish whiskey that I tried recently that this reminds me of. Yes, the caramelization, uh, there's a caramelized effect here that's uh, very different. There's also a juiciness to it, which is also quite nice. And uh, from my notes here... Um, a good lot of maturity, and I write here, stir-fried roasted apples. 
so uh, stir frying apples um, on the pan. A hint to peat. Dry sauna, yes, dry sauna, uh, a f like a newly made dry sauna with lots of cedar. Some spices and vanilla in there also. Okay, on to the palette for this one. Cheers. Mmm. It's like a juicy candy bomb. Sweet with just a hint of dryness. Um, a slight little bit of that fizzy candy effect. Um, smoothness uh, is um, smooth, 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 fr smooth fruitiness. Okay, there we go. Smooth fruitiness is from my notes a long time ago. And uh, at the back of the palette, you do get this toasted, smoky oakiness. Mm. And the finish I'm getting here, fruit, big fruit, all kinds of fruit. Um, also, vanilla pods, the pods themselves, very strong vanilla in the finish. Mm. What fruits especially? There's a bit of banana, there's a bit of pineapple in there, apples and pears. Um, not a lot of citrus. Uh, mango, yep. Yeah. So more of those uh, tree fruits and um, like the, the fall fruits of apples and pears and then tropical. Mm. Great. Okay, we'll add a bit of water there. Stir that up a little bit. This one's also 40%, I think I didn't mention. This is definitely something that you should have if you don't have it yet, or if you've never had it. Now, we're going to compare them with water. Uh, and as you're watching it, you may, may be wondering what all these bottles are doing back here. Uh, actually, this is my Korea collection. Uh, this is a collection of whiskeys that uh, I have no intention of opening anytime soon. And uh, some of them are uh, ones I bought here. Some of them are ones I bought in Canada and brought back. Um, really interested in this one. I'll probably open that someday. Crown Royal 15 year old with a very ostentatious uh, glass stopper. Not a cork stopper, but a glass one. So that's interesting. Very heavy, extremely heavy bottle. And I think that's the first edition of Signet from Glenmorangie. Um, so also not opening that one. And a uh, really interesting uh, Tom and Tao here that I found here in Korea. Very cool. Um, Balvenie single barrel, the bourbon, uh, bourbon matured. Highland Park 2001. Had one bottle that loved it. Uh, very drinkable, very reasonably priced. Uh, the Aaron limited edition Aaron Angels Reserve, cask strength, I believe, at 51.1%. Uh, Might not be cask strength, doesn't say so on there. Uh, Benriek Peated, 17-year-old Septendesim, which means uh, 17. <laughs> and uh, it's signed, let me show you that, it's signed by uh, someone special. Who's it signed by? Is that okay for me to say that here? Why not? Uh, signed by one Stuart Buchanan. Stuart Buchanan. Very interesting fellow. He is the uh, brand ambassador for the Ben Riek. Um, bad. Okay, anyway. Uh, another ca Cavalon. Uh, this is the Solus Sherry also. I had one of those before. This is the older of the two. And... Um, I believe that that one is the darkest of the uh, the two also. And anyway, I can't remember which one was darker. This was the older one, so I decided I would keep that one. Then we've got the Winnipeg Jets uh, jersey for my uh, my children. 
so far, I think my, uh, my second daughter, Lena, has worn that one. And uh, my third daughter will probably wear that as well. Then we've got some Canadians here. Uh, Highwood, uh, I think that's from when they began um, distilling, 1984. So that's cool. Uh, anyway, um, McGuinness, Old Canada. Very interesting uh, rye. Then we've got the Glenfiddich Pure Malt. Also, that's a good lesson in Glenfiddich if you have uh, the ability to get a bottle. Get one. And the Crown Royal Hand Selected Barrel. I've had that now, gosh, a year and some now. And uh, I have no intention of finishing it. I'm hanging on to it because it's just, it's just great, great Crown Royal. Get that one if you can. All right, back to these babies. So we've got the uh, Chardonnay Cask Finish over here. And the Chardonnay matured uh, on my left and your right. Again, no difference in color pretty much. Maybe it seems that this one is slightly uh, darker than the uh, the new one, which actually is a good thing, I would say. Okay. Again, very sweet, very candy-like. Vanilla, caramel, apples. Similar, but just richer. A little bit more depth, but also you know don't let's let's remember it's also much more reasonable. This one was eighty five, uh, eighty five thousand I think, and this one was about fifty five I want to say fifty five fifty eight, um, and considering that uh, that is the price from a couple years ago, compared to now, that's even a a, a bigger spread in that sense. Anyway, they're both very nice. Um, a little bit more complexity here. Those uh, wine gummies are coming through in the nose also. And here, a lot of straight up maltiness. Mm. Much more of that white wine Chardonnay influence with water, which is very interesting. Um, what did I write here? Yeah, more pronounced wine. Also, uh, some sake, uh, Japanese, um, we'll call it, can we call it rice wine? See, wine is really for fruit, right? Beer is for grain, rice is a grain, so sake is really not a wine. But we can call it a um, uh, a f flat flat rice beer. I don't know. Um, I guess we call it rice wine for lack of a better word there. But it really isn't wine because wine comes from fruit. Anyway, so something sake like um, on the uh, the nose also. And the sake continues through the palate also. Uh, sweet fruit malt, a little bit drier on the palate. And the finish also, it's like a nice dry white wine, which my mom uh, likes. Um, hard to find really dry white wine though, isn't it? I guess if you want a, a nice dry white wine, it needs to be uh, aged well in oak. Okay, how about the uh, ten-year-old Chardonnay matured? <laughs> well, it's delicious. I forgot to tell you about the nose. More apples, and a little bit more wood smoke uh, on the nose, with water added. Mm-hmm. And on the palate, a 
the same fruit bomb. <clears throat> Pardon me. <coughs> oh, I'll have to edit that out. Oh my goodness, what's happened to me? I've become a... Uh, mm -mm. Now I sound like a wise guy. Mm. <clears throat> Is my boy... Oh, there we go. Hmm. You know the mob, the mob, mob guy on uh, the Simpsons. <laughs> That's what he sounded like. Um, all right, so more peat now. I'm noticing much more peat with water added. Uh, peat and also. Hmm. Also some nectarines. Uh, apricots, very ripe apricots, and um, yeah, there's a warm warmth to it that's uh, very nice. Little again, that peat is is still there, along with a little bit of just a hint of uh, some kind of a I don't know a, an unusual smokiness. We'll just call it okay. Uh, so that's the ten year old. Uh, let me try the. Unaged one one more time. Very juicy. Again, lots of white wine on the nose with water added. So you, you try it with water when you try this one. It's fruitier. It's sweeter. Um, and don't get me wrong, right through the finish, very nice. Lots of wine influence. Sake. Very interesting that has uh, a kind of a sake flavor to it, which, uh, which is great. Um, both beautiful whiskeys. Uh, so what am I going to do here for scoring? Let me get that set up so you can see everything. Um, all right, the currently widely available Glenmore Chardonnay cask finish as part of their Elgin Classic series. This one is going to get 86 out of 100. That's the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Glenmore Elgin Classic Chardonnay cask finish. 86. Great. And if you factor in the price, it's it's a buy. It's a get to the store and get some uh, because you never know. Um, sometimes uh, a store will get one shipment of something, something like this that's not that kind of in huge demand. And uh, then when they sell down, they just don't get any more until... Uh, until the rep can can go back there and, and pitch, uh, you know, to buy another order. How about the Glenmore 10-year-old? It's good. It's great. It's lovely. Uh, the Glenmore 10-year-old... I'm going to go with 90 out of 100 for that one. Uh, so, the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score again. Glenmore, 10 year old, uh, the Chardonnay Cask Matured is going to be 90 out of 100. And I think, especially, what I like about it is its complexity and its uh, singularity uh, of flavor. You don't just don't get the flavor of this in anything else. Um, anyway, so let's hope that they uh, put out. Uh, I would love to see an older Chardonnay uh, matured whiskey, which I'm sure, I'm sure that Graham uh, Cowell is planning because that's kind of like their, that's their thing. Uh, the Chardonnay is uh, Glen uh That's their focus um, for at least some part of what they do there. Anyway, and they've got the French connection also, so I guess they've got a connection to the uh, the Chardonnay maker of uh, of wine that's being matured in those casks. 
Uh, anyway, so 86 for the Elgin Classic Chardonnay cask finish and 90 for the 10-year-old Chardonnay matured. That's the Whiskey Whistle scores for those. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. You can just click right over here. And uh, uh, don't forget about my Twitter account, Whiskey Whistle, Instagram, Whiskey Whistle, Facebook, Whiskey Whistle, and for the Koreans watching the Neighbor blog, uh, you can search either Mark Kaufman or you can search for Whiskey Whistle uh, in English or Korean as uh, Korean as uh, Whiskey Whistle or uh, Whiskey Whistle also will uh, lead you there, okay? And uh, anything else to mention? No, thanks for watching. See you next time. There'll be another one coming very soon. Something exciting. Yep, goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.